Physics is not on my side to hoist this antenna up, uh, the pole that is, uh, 30 feet worth of uh, pole there. See I'm supposed to lower this section down and everything should come up, but the, phys the physics of it won't let me do that, not, with, not by myself at least, so I kind of conjured up this little, this little field expedient uh, solution here. Here I got my chain link fence. That's uh, secured by concrete there in the bottom. I got some Air Force strap there. And then sort of a hand pulley system. I forgot what they call these things. I got a crank right there connected to the bottom. And on the bottom there I got a, a little bracket thing just to help it from not slipping up and down the pole. And this is going to be my uh, pivot point right here to keep everything aligned I guess. And I'm using the bars there to do that. So. Let's see how it goes. using the uh, cranking system there. Now I got uh, a balance point there working in my favor now and I can easily put it, position it within the pole there and secure it then down. So that was cool. The only thing that went my way so far. Okay guys, since I got this thing all apart, the last cable that I have to interconnect, what? I want to show you some uh, test measurements that uh, might give you an idea of how the, this stuff works as far as distance, cable length, cable size and all that good stuff oh. uh, so estimated length from the garage to this location here is 142 feet in total it'll be roughly estimated at 170 feet from start to finish so here's an example of types of cables that 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 is out there from from extreme crappy to extremely good so a lot of hams and, and civilian guys out there that are, that are used to uh, are mostly used to seeing this RG58 here. That's what this cable is called. It's the thinner cable here. And you know what? This type of cable is pretty much good for like uh, field expedience, running of a uh, antenna like onto your carport or something like that. You know, something real field expedient. And for having and it's also used for uh, vehicle installations, you know, like here I got my, my, my whip antenna here. And that's what I'm running within the vehicle. And here's my cable right here. And that cable is good for that because of the size and stuff like that. Uh, for your home installation, this is pretty much what you'll see. This is what's in range of a lot of you guys as far as the size of cable here uh, this goes by many names and they're all different as far as uh, different uh, specs and stuff like that that is called LMR 400 and that is I think the best cable that you could get for your home installation uh, it's about what is it like almost half an inch thick really thick cable inside and it's flexible to where you could run it throughout your house or whatever and if it, this is probably what you would run up a tower in a normal home setting and this is what I recommend for for average homes out there now beyond this point here is where you get into the commercial grade stuff and if you guys got deep pockets or knows somebody that knows somebody 
then you run into this grate here. And this is a half inch super flex. And you can see the size of this center conductor there. It, it's a lot bigger and sturdier. And the outside is, is jacketed by this corrugated copper jacket. And yeah, this one is pretty flexible to use, but you can't really do sharp turns on it. So this is what I got running up there a quarter of the way. What I got mostly running up there is this half inch hard line. And it's a, it's a bit thicker than, than the uh, half inch super flex. And it's got a bigger center conductor there. And that cable that I just tested, where we're using this thing here. Out in the uh, public safety arena, this is pretty much what they use for uh, base stations going into uh, police stations and firehouses and, and, and most applications out there. And then to go to the extreme end, it's one and seven eighth inch here. And this is really thick here. It's got a hollow tube there. This is mostly made for frequencies higher than 400 megahertz because the higher the frequency, the different sort of properties that it takes to travel up a transmission line. And man, this is a bitch to manhandle. We, we call this wrestling the python. Because uh, when we install this thing out in the field or replace it, it's you're wrestling a python. This is hard stuff to maneuver. And beyond this, there's bigger stuff out there, bigger diameter as well, which I don't have an example of. This is pretty much out of the range out of, you, uh, of a lot of you guys, but this is what it takes to kind of like compensate for the losses on the, on the line for such long distances uh, in conjunction with using a high gain antenna to make up for the losses. Uh, once again, just to summarize, this is pretty much what civilians would use in their homes. Uh, LMR 400, uh, RG214 cable, uh, RG8, and there's some other ones that I can't think of right now. Uh, but they pretty much have a similar size to this and, and it has a braided uh, shield within the, the, the insulator here, not hard corrugated uh, copper like these over here. Okay, now that I got the antennas interconnected, I got the transmission line set up and it's connected to the, its corresponding antenna that's up there on the hill. So I'm going to use amateur radio UHF for legal reasons and I got the capabilities with amateur as far as power out and, and the permission to use it for me to legally do my test here. Uh, I couldn't do this with other services because uh, legalities so we're going to stick with uh, amateur. So we're going to test the, the whole system out to see if it works. Right now I got the antenna set up and I have my originating point right down here on 440 specifically 445.175 the UHF band and I picked the UHF band because that has the most losses uh, when it comes to distance on, on a transmission line uh, that I'm capable of reproducing here uh, legally. The higher the frequency the more losses you're going to have over distance. Uh, the lower the frequencies like HF the less losses you're going to have. So for me to kind of see what's going on I'm going to use UHF. Anyway, so right now this antenna here is uh, the uh, Jim Slim antenna that I got on top. So right now I got this to test for forward power. So it's going to go from the radio out the antenna. And this is the power. Five watts right on the dot. Now if I turn the dial, it's going to measure the power going back from the top back into the radio so if there's any problems or mix match or anything like that it's going to show on the meter there so here I'm going to transmit real quick that thing hardly moved at all transmit that is a perfect match for the Jim Slim antenna uh, on UHF perfect if this needle here uh, showed more than half a watt which is which would be 10% of the 5 watts that it transmitted then that would have been a problem that's the cutoff point to say that there's something wrong with the uh, antenna or or the uh, transmission line itself 10% is the rule of thumb as far as the the point to to determine if it's 
bad or good got to do better than 10% down down into the 1% around there okay now I swapped the antenna line for the the line that's connected up to the uh, disc cone scanner antenna way on top and I was planning on using that antenna as well as a uh, backup antenna in case my gym sling ever took a crap so so uh, same configuration is going through power out we're gonna measure to see what it is 4.8 watts so the uh, wattage coming out has reduced only uh, 0 0.2 uh, of, a, of a watt which is still kinda good but the but the real proof is to see is is what is my reflected coming back into the radio so I turn the dial here transmit again That looks like it just moved maybe one and a half watts, which is, oh, no, I'm sorry, uh, 0.15 watts. Clearly way under the 10% the rule. This antenna will be still good for a backup antenna in case my main antenna for the dual band radio ever took a crap. So I love having redundancies. So I got two redundancies, redundancies here. Uh, on both these uh, radios. Now as a demonstration I want to test out to see how much losses do we get from 140 feet of half inch hardline cable on UHF. Uh, just to demonstrate to you guys that uh, even though this thing is rated for 5 watts here at this point by the time it gets to the, to the antenna 140 something feet away there is going to be some losses. Uh, it will not be for or five watts up there so here's the uh, the starting point I'm going to use this uh, simplex repeater here to help me test this this out where this will be transmitting the frequent the, the uh, radio from this location here before I had to use my uh, uh, remote control wireline uh, surplus uh, kit there to to do the same thing but this makes it a hell of a lot easier for troubleshooting purposes or whatever uh, I'll be going into this a little bit more later down the road. So here we are at the end point and here's the uh, transmission line, the end of it coming out from the conduit and that there hooks up to one of these two antennas here. But we have some distance. The distance of this to the garage is 142 feet. Uh, it's feeding my watt meter coming this way and at the end this is representing a perfect antenna. Uh, the dummy load that is so it replicates a perfect uh, installation or uh, configuration so let's let's test to see what the uh, out wattage is remember down down at the hill in the garage the originating point was 4.8 watts on 440 megahertz okay let's see if there's any losses at this point here five four three two one test over well that looks like three watts down at the hill it was 4.8 watts and at this point here is three watts so we lost 1.8 watts on a hundred and 42 feet worth of cable going down to the garage there and that's to be expected that is the norm for distance and the size cable and stuff like that just because you think you have a, a radio that's kicking out 50 watts worth of power you're gonna get that same 50 watts coming out at this point here you'll probably get half if that uh, cable selection is a big deal uh, like I said, I have a commercial grade half inch hard line here. If you run 140 feet of RJ58, this little thing, thin uh, cable here that's used in vehicles and test benches and stuff like that, your losses are going to be horrendous. It's almost not even worth building a tower if you're going to use this cable here. Uh, the best application for that is a short run up to your windowsill or something down there. Uh, homeowners, uh, 
the next best solution for you guys would be LMR 400 the uh, flexible cable uh, that I've showed you before so the rule of thumb is uh, the best biggest cable that you could buy with the shortest distance that you could run that you feel comfortable with I'm comfortable with this setup right here oh by the way those losses that I just showed you from 5 watts to 3 watts that ratio will, will apply to even higher wattages so if you got 50 watts being pumped into this you're gonna lose uh, 18 or 20 watts out of your transmitter it's a ratio thing so they translate into higher wattages uh, 500 watts you're gonna lose 200 watts what engineers do to make up for the losses is they select an antenna that has a higher gain uh, rating on it and uh, it usually comes from the manufacturers with that gain already stipulated like uh, the folded dipole there the Jim Slim uh, folded dipole its natural properties the way it's designed will give you two point something uh, DB's of gain which somewhat translate into uh, almost uh, two point something uh, increase in in effective radiation so uh, let's say you got three watts coming out of here by the time it when it when it starts to radiate out out the antenna out in the field is going to feel like it's transmitting 4.5 watts uh, what's actually happening is is that radiation bubble is being squashed down and when you squash down a bubble it kind of elongates the uh, the uh, perimeter of that bubble if, if you ever smash down a, a, a round play-doh or something like that it's the same effect the uh, this cone antenna up there I think it's got a little bit of uh, gain to it not much I'm not sure I haven't checked the specs but same thing so even though down here is 3 watts of power losing 2 watts on the way up here from the garage the antenna itself is going to make it appear like it's 4.8 watts out into the field and that also includes uh, receive from the field too it's going to it's going to uh, pick up more out in the field so that's how engineers uh, design an antenna mast or antenna system to kind of make up for these losses because you can't there's no way around it you're going to get losses with this much distance here no matter what you do like I said the rule of thumb is pick the best cable with the shortest run pos as possible for maximum uh, efficiency on your system there okay guys I think that was the one point that I wanted to convey to you guys uh, the importance of uh, sort of amateur engineer your site and what to look out for what I've discussed so far was rule of thumb uh, rules that you guys should should use as a guide uh, I'm not sure I'm telling you that's how you should do it but uh, you, the proof is in the pudding I showed you what could happen if you choose the wrong cable or make this thing too long of a distance from your home station so that was the one point that I wanted to convey in this video now I could go ahead and start connecting this line here weatherproof it as always and uh, prepare for the next the final stage of this installation which is uh, uh, lightning protection and grounding and that's going to be a video all to itself because it, 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 it deserves its own uh, its own subject matter so uh, I'm going to sign off and uh, complete the rest of this thing here and uh, I see you whenever Gorilla Geek going 10-10.